If you're a software developer, you've likely written a good number of Hello World programs. So many, in fact, that you're probably wondering why the world has yet to say hello back. Despite being ghosted, we've continued to slip into the Earth's DMs in a number of different programming languages. Odds are these languages followed a rather similar structure, with perhaps some slight differences in syntax or function naming. Whilst this is true for most common programming languages, there are a good number that are unrecognisable in the way that they are written, which are often considered cursed. These cursed languages are known as esoteric programming languages, or esolangs for short, and there's a whole website dedicated to them. These languages are called esoteric for good reason, and whilst some are created for very specific use cases, many have been created as a means to test human creativity on the humble Turing machine. So for this video, I decided to write Hello World in five of these esoteric languages that I personally found to be the most interesting. The first language we're going to write Hello World in is arguably the most famous of the Esso Langs, and that language is Brainfuck. Brainfuck isn't just named to be provocative. It's a pretty accurate description of what happens to your mental state when you attempt to write this language for the first time. However, once you get past the initial mental lobotomy, the language's design is actually rather simple, consisting of two main components, an array of 30,000 bytes, each initialized to zero, and a byte pointer, which is initialized to start at the beginning of the array. The semantics of the language allow for the pointer to move up and down the array, manipulating the bytes at whichever index the pointer is currently placed at. So let's write our Hello World program. To begin, let's print out the letter H. To do this, we'll set the first byte in the array to 72, which is the ASCII value for H, and print it out. To increment the value at the current pointer, we use the plus symbol. Let's go ahead and do this 72 times. We can then print it out to the console using the dot symbol. Let's go ahead and run this in the terminal, and we should see the letter H print to console. So far, so good. We could continue this method to write out each letter if we wanted to, but it's not the most elegant approach. Instead, we can use a different method. Brainfuck gives us the ability to perform looping, which can make our code much more concise. To loop, we first need to set a loop counter, which is the number of iterations that we want to perform. We can roughly figure this out by using the square root of the number we want, which in our case gives us 8.4. If we divide our 72 by 8, we get back the number 9. So we want to loop 9 times, incrementing the value by 8 each iteration. Let's go ahead and set the first byte to the value of 9, which will be our loop counter. We can then define our loop using the brace symbols. Anything we put inside of the braces will be our loop's logic. Here we want to move the pointer to the next byte in our array, increment this byte by 8 times, and then move the pointer back to the loop counter, decrementing it by 1. When the loop counter reaches 0, the loop will end. After the loop, we then want to increment the pointer again to where our first letter's byte value is stored and printed out. Now if we run this code, we should see the letter H being printed to the screen. All that remains is to do this for each character in our Hello World string. You'll notice on some lines, instead of using a fresh byte in the array, I just increment the current value, as it's only a few steps to get the expected value we want. You'll also notice for the L character, I just print this out twice. For the exclamation mark, well I do something very similar. I decorate the pointer back to the byte that we used for our space value and then increment it by one and print out that value. Once you understand how the language works, it's actually not too difficult to write, which translates well to many other esoteric languages, such as Ook, which is basically a derivative language with a pretty similar concept. Whilst inspiring a large number of similar languages, Brainfuck wasn't the first esoteric language to be created. That title goes to the compiler language with no pronounceable acronym, which is abbreviated to Intercal. Pronunciation issues aside, this language was created as a parody by two Princeton University students in 1972, which happens to be the same year the C programming language first appeared. This is an important fact about how esoteric Intercal is. Whilst modern esoteric languages can be somewhat difficult to understand, they typically come from the minds of more modern developers who have been brought up knowing only the comfort of the C programming language and its influence on modern development. Modern Esselangs merely adopted the dark whilst Intercal was born to it. The languages that inspired Intercal were much more torturous, such as Fortran and COBOL, which are arguably esoteric by themselves. So here is Hello World in Intercal. Yep, it's pretty cursed. Let's try and decipher what is actually happening. 
The first thing to notice is that every line must start with a statement identifier. This is either do, please, or please do. If we look at the first line of code, here we're defining an array of 16-bit integers called 1, which is sized to 13 elements. This is where we'll store the bytes for our hello world string. The next lines go through and actually add the string to each index within the array, which is done using the sub command. Determining the values for that array, however, is where things get a little cursed. In most languages, you would typically either enter the ASCII character or value that you wanted the program to output. When it comes to intercal, however, this isn't the case. Instead, the compiler will print out the value at each element on the array using a four-step algorithm. This is a little complex, so bear with me. It took me a whole evening to figure it out. The algorithm is as follows. Step one, the compiler would take the ASCII value of the previously printed character and reverse its bits. If there was no previously printed value, such as when you're at the start of the array, then this value is zero. Step two, take the value at the current index of the array. Step three, subtract the value in step two from the value in step one. Make sure to handle any underflowing by keeping the number in eight bits. And step four, take the result of step three and reverse its bits to get the ASCII value of the character to print. Yes, it's really this horrible. In order to figure out the values I needed for Hello World, I ended up creating my own Python script to perform this calculation in reverse. If you're interested in running this yourself, I added the link to the code down below. This printing logic is a bit of a puzzle to understand, but it's not the only one that Intercal requires. Let's first compile this code using the Intercal compiler, which is aptly known as ICK. This is the puzzle in action. Here, the compiler has produced an error message telling us that we, the programmer, are insufficiently polite. This is because each program must contain a specific range of the please keyword, and in our case, we haven't used enough. If we try to rectify this by adding too many, we'll receive another error from the compiler, informing us that we're being overly polite. Therefore, just like Goldilocks and the Three Bears, you need to find an amount that sits somewhere in the middle and is just right. Out of this list, Intercal was probably the second hardest one for me to figure out. And whilst it may not be anything great to look at, it's certainly better than looking at nothing, right? Well, it just so happens that the creator of this next language would probably disagree. To show what I mean, here is Hello World in our next language. You're probably thinking, he's made a mistake. There's nothing on the screen. Well, let me run this code with our next interpreter. As you can see, we get back the message of Hello World. So what exactly is this code parsing? Well, if I highlight the code, it makes it a little more clear. We basically have a bunch of white space, which coincidentally is also the name of the language. Where most programming languages ignore the white space in code, white space does the opposite and ignores all other characters, only considering the white space as code. Now, you're probably thinking, how many white space characters are there? Well, the answer is not a lot. There's only three in total, which are the tab, space, and the new line or line feed character. If I set up my editor to display these, you'll be able to see the code a little more clearly. I'm using the underscore character for spaces, the greater than symbol for tabs, and the dollar symbol for new line. It may not feel like it, but these three characters are enough to create a working Turing machine. Let me show you how it works by simplifying our code and only printing the letter H. Whitespace uses a stack to manage its memory. So the first thing we want to do is push the ASCII value of H onto it. We can push a number onto the stack using the space space combination, followed by the number represented as binary. Binary is constructed using white space itself, where the tab character is equal to one and the space is equal to zero. The letter H is represented by 72 in decimal, which in 8-bit binary is 01001000. This translates in white space to space tab space space, tab space space space. We can then end our binary sequence using the new line character. Next, we want to output the character at the top of the stack. We can do this using a tab followed by a new line and then space and space. We then end the program using the three line feeds. Next, if we run this code, we should see the letter H print to console. We can also print this as a number if we want by changing our printing logic from space space to space tab. Pretty neat. White space is really impressive in design, providing a lot of functionality with different combinations of characters. Considering that there are only three characters in use, it's rather impressive. However, it's certainly one of the more verbose SOLangs. If we're looking for something a little more concise, well, fortunately our next group of languages fits that requirement. 
The next language we're going to write Hello World in is actually part of a subgroup of esoteric languages. These languages are used for an activity called Code Golf, which is similar to a lead code type challenge, but instead of attempting to perform the challenge in the shortest time or memory complexity, the goal is to complete it using the least amount of code, measured in either bytes or characters. In order to get the best scores possible, esoteric languages for the purpose of Code Golf were created, allowing developers to write code to solve these challenges in as few key presses as possible. The one I decided to write Hello World in is called Stuck. And to do so is pretty easy. Here it is in all its glory. Before you ask, no this isn't an editing error. I haven't left the whitespace answer up by accident. Stuck has a unique behaviour in which an empty source file automatically translates to hello world, thus allowing for the smallest golf score possible, zero bytes. Pretty neat. Golfing languages are extremely esoteric, and therefore can be very difficult to read. But they are still readable by most software engineers, which is a lot better than our last, but certainly not least, language. This language is called Velato, and it's a real doozy. It also happens to be the language I had the most trouble writing Hello World in. And there's two reasons for this. The first is because the language compiler only works in Windows, unless you use the JavaScript transpiler. This meant I had to break my separation of church and state and load up some code on my gaming PC. The second reason is because the compiler doesn't read text-based source code. Instead, it compiles MIDI files. MIDI is a file format that provides a standardized way for music sequences to be saved, transported, and opened in other systems. It's typically created using musical instruments, but can also be created using software. If you happen to be one of the few musician slash software developer combos, then Velato is probably gonna be an easy language for you to pick up. However, I happen to be more on the tone-deaf side of the scale when it comes to musical creativity, which makes writing Velato more of a challenge. Fortunately, there is a tutorial on how to write Hello World, using the Guido Notation system. I'll drop a link to this guide down below. Given that this source code is a MIDI file, however, this one is a little difficult to show. Fortunately, I happen to have the musical score to hand for those who are musically literate. For the rest of us, well, here is the sound of Hello World in C. The musical key, not the language. Enjoy. <laughs> 